introduce some of you have seen the IOC demo over in the room over here, and there's been more of that. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Uh, yeah, so what we did the first part of the uh, session there, we were actually watching you with our video analytics, and we saw that there was more interest in video analytics because of the raised eyebrows. So we figured that we followed that back up and set a rational this afternoon. So what? <laughs> so you, you've been on that now. I'm only kidding. So uh, what we're going to talk about is uh, what I've broken this down into video segments here, right? So I want to take you through these things of these different features, so what is a face match, right? Face match is that it's got two eyes, a nose, ear, mouth, right? It's a face. I don't know who it is, I just know it is a face. That's what face match is. That's what I'm going to use for face match. Face recognition is those two eyes, nose, mouth, ear, belong to Bert and Boucher. Now, I understand that <laughs> with, a, with a pretty good degree of certainty or with some level of scoring, that that person is a, that, that face is a particular person. Then I'm gonna talk about, uh, from video analytics perspective, what is the, the difference between an alert and an attribute? An attribute is, as I'm moving through the frame, I'm in a video, as the movement's going on, right, all those things are being, uh, all those events are being captured. So the color of my, uh, of my arm swinging is green with a little bit of blue on the end, maybe, if I can detect that as I'm moving through the scene. That's what an event is. Uh, an alert is that I set a trigger point. So if somebody comes in this door and walks beyond this line, I dare you to cross this line. If somebody crosses this line, I can set that up to be an alert. And then I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Then I'm gonna talk about a multi-camera event search. So this is kind of more of a forensic view of where I want to, I want to go back and look at, um, look at video segments and try to piece something together as an investigator. Very forensic. Then a couple other features I want to show you, and at the very end is, what does it look like for um, a, a, an operator to be able to manually send something over to alert a wider audience, like in the Intelligent Operations Center. So normally I would have a presentation that I would do before this, but I'm going to jump before I jump right into these kind of features, really want to talk about, um, I just lost my train of thought. Ah, so I think Bob talked about it earlier, right? So 16 minutes, your, your ability to detect something in a video, you lose interest. You're looking at the same thing over and over again. It just goes by, it's right, it's not very interesting. That's why they move lifeguards around on the beach every 20 minutes. They move them. I've heard this twice today. Operators, yes. human operators, lose interest after 15 minutes, and that's an excuse to mechanize it. What I do on home videos is just fast forward. Yeah, exactly. And so you've got to catch it. This is catching it real time. So what they did is they did a study. I mean, I, I know the pattern, and if I fast forward at the right speed, I can still see the pattern. That, that, that includes how yeah. things had to happen in the past. If you're right. working real time, if you're scanning the door, yeah. you know, it's like TSA. Yeah, they can go back at the end of the day and fast forward and exactly the luggage yeah. in real time. They'll forget. So there was a, there's a couple of things out on YouTube and stuff. One of them is, like I said, count the balls. How many times the teams are passing the ball back and forth? And I think it's uh, they're in they're one teams in white, the other ones in black. And, and, and it says count how many times that they pass between each other. And they're doing all this stuff. And then at the very end, they say, okay, how many did you count? You got the wrong count. And then it said, by the way, did you see the gorilla? Yeah. Right? Has anybody seen that? The gorilla. And the gorilla, and, and, and it's not like the gorilla runs through, it's like the gorilla's dancing through like this, through the video, and you miss it because you're looking for something else. So it's not just about the 20 minutes of you know, time that's going on that I just lose, you know, lose interest and I'm going to prop my feet up. They're really, uh, they're, these are professionals, they're trying to watch that video. It's wherever your mind focuses, it's just the way that we're wired. We're not really wired that good to capture those things. So you'll see the, those bank of cameras that you look at. So all what, what we're trying to do is do two things. One is the forensic side of it, but we'll go back and do the search. And the other one is the real time aspect of it to draw your attention to this. Now, will it be 100% of giving me uh, accuracy on alerts? No, you're gonna set some variability of where this threshold is. And you know what, if, if I know there's an event going on, and it's a, uh, a school football game, for example. I might want to dial up the threshold a little bit, and I'll accept a few more false positives. 
So that's what this thing is really doing, and you can set alerts based on, you know, Bob mentioned, you know, um, leaving a bag, um, you know, somebody tr um, going a particular um, direction. So one of the demos I did, if, if somebody goes this way, it's okay, but if they come in that door, it's not okay. We can trigger off of those kinds of things and create alerts. Right. So I'm not going to show you all those alerts. We're just going to I'm just going to go through pretty quickly, just showing these each of these categories. Just know that there's some really uh, cool ways to set off uh, uh, alerts. Right, some very interesting things. We use it in transportation, uh, cars uh, going over a certain speed. We can check that and trigger off alert off of that. So there's all kinds of um, things that we can do alert. The cool thing is we're doing is we're tracking everything as an object, right? Once we identify it as an object, we, we track it, and then uh, and we're indexing as much information as you want to store in that um, um, uh, that database, the, 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 the metadata that you're able to search. So color, speed, trajectory. So the first thing, face match. Really quick, Frank comes around the corner. My alerts are going to show up here on the very top where it says instant alert. As soon as it detects a face, it pops up there with some degree of certainty, right? That is a face. And not only that, it did a stop action on it, right? <clears throat> Next face comes around. Third face comes around. That's all I wanted to show you. When someone comes around, it did it. But the interesting thing is it took a picture of the best face. Frank was doing this, he was moving his face around. But you notice when it took the picture, it took the best possible picture it thought of was of a face. And sent that on, and now I can use that that picture to do something else. And that something else is face recognition. So we got a couple of ways to do that. One is there's a um, there's a software developer's toolkit and uh, that we can actually, we've integrated that directly. I'm gonna show you a very manual way to do that just using the software an operator uh, would do. So with face recognition, IBM has a, a product called CopLink. Oh, it's slow on yours. Talk to that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop the face from up here because it's on a Windows machine. I'm going to drop it right into there. And then uh, the reason why I use this software, uh, this is what we use in policing, is because I can act, add some additional metadata filters. And we actually have that. It's a, it's a product that we have that has the, um, the ability to store the face. So now it's doing the recognition against the face in that database. And it comes back and says, yep, that was Burton Boucher. That's what face recognition is. Alert search. Everybody remember what alert was? Right. Cross the line, get a Cross the line. It's some trigger point that you did. So that we're gonna see. Let's look at one of those. So I'm on the alerts tab at the very top. I'm gonna do a search. I'm gonna I can choose which camera views I want to search on. I'm going to start typing in a keyword, and I've already predefined them, right? So I start, I put in P, and a list of things that are under P are going to show up, person entering, within the last four hours, coming in through here. There's a severe line up here. All my search result lists are going to show up. Oh, that's all I wanted to show you. Sorry about that. that so an alert search is, I'm searching for that trigger point. They're already predefined. Um, it went a little fast here. What, um, it's person entering was one of them. The other one was bags left unattended, bag drop, abandoned bag, something like that. So all those things that you set up, you're giving them a name, and they're going to trigger off automatically and send a notification. It will show up in the key frame at the very top, and an operator just looks at that. It's very much easier to look at that than just watching four or five cameras. It makes them much more efficient. That's the first use case, making that surveillance professional more effective. The second use case is sending that alert to something like IOC to give you a bigger, uh, you know, uh, to use that uh, in correlation with other information, maybe for first responders or to take act, any kind of action. So next one, let's do a attribute event search. An event is anything that's, that's inside of that, um, that's been indexed. So here we've got object size, we've got speed, we've got color. Uh, this is an older version, and all of them show up in the bottom in the bottom pane here. So I search for a large object, and I see trucks. 
I see different trucks going around this complex. I have multiple camera views. So that's an event search. I look for something large in size. I could specify the color if I want to. Uh, in the latest version, after um, after the, the Boston incident, we actually added, uh, Bob mentioned it, the ability to search on hat color. Because both of those, one guy had a white hat, the other one had a black hat. So we added that as, a, as an attribute to search on. So we can search on the shirt, whether it's a pattern search of color, or uh, whether it, and the color itself. So what I searched on just now was an attribute event search. Yes, sir. Can you get uh, even more specific on that? And, and that so you're looking for a U-Haul or budget truck versus a large truck. Or you gotcha. A gotcha. So the question is, can you get more specific when you're looking for the vehicle, like if you're looking for a specific, like a U-Haul? Uh, right now, no. You'd have to OCR that side of that truck, <laughs> and you'd have to do it um, at, at a. You'd have to capture that video at a resolution that would support OCR. Normally, if you look at what's out there, already deployed, could we do it? Yeah, it could be done, but um, it'd be custom. It's not in the product. The resolution of the of typical surveillance video is not really high. No, you can target the color. And the you can do the color. You can do the color and the size. So you can do that. Now, again, color is affected by lighting, time of the day. You got trees. So it's, it's a very complex problem. So it wouldn't confuse a guy wearing a Boston Red Sox hat with a guy wearing a Yankees hat. Well, it might. But you know what? Instead of having to look at 3,000 hours worth of video, I've got it down to, you know, 27. 100, maybe 200 frames to look at. Frames. That, that, you, can you imagine how much faster that's got to be? So that's really what we're doing on that search. So we're, we're okay if, if, if the severity of the incident is high, I might widen up and, and let more things come in. That's like that false positive. So I can go through that. I can do that a lot quicker than I can. Because you know how they do these investigations? Okay, everybody line up, you take a monitor, you take a monitor, you take a monitor, you look at this video and watch it all the way through, right? And then, oh, by the way, we didn't find anything? Okay, switch monitors, do it again. So they, they make it into a parallel process with human observers. Yes. A distributed process. So you saw that, uh, if I go back, and let's do it on the multi-camera They, they randomized it? First iteration doesn't work, they randomize it. No, I was just doing a uh, how they would do it in an investigation, right. right? Manually. The software that we're showing, when that pops up, the very top frame that was there, those were events that were showing up real time, were popping up right there. That interface is an interface that you would replace that bank of uh, video monitors with. And so instead of having to look around at the different video monitors, whether there's three, four, or five that I'm responsible for, I would just look at that key top frame and look for the things that are high likelihood of suspicious activity or something that needs a, a human to make some additional discernment about. So that's more for the security guard interface as opposed to the investigator who's going back and looking all the sort of through all that. So uh, great, that's great. So the, the, uh, the, the, the comment was that, so that's more for the, uh, the real time surveillance operator to view rather than forensics. And so the forensics was when I did the search, they showed up in the bottom large section right in here, right? And we'll see that again in this search. They show up in a, one of those panels, not in the keyframe along the top. So great, great observation. We're gonna see that right now with the multi camera. So this is about the truck. So uh, I know what went by really quickly, but in that, in that segment, there was a truck that had like you know, like a gas bottles on it and oxygen and things like that. That was suspicious. It was a white truck and it had those gas bottles on it. So what I want to know now is, I didn't order any, we don't, we're not a manufacturer. We're IBM, we do data, we don't do Students, if oxygen. I may have your attention, please. If you did not return your laptop or the power supply today, L3 will be on campus tomorrow from 7 to 8 a.m. So please bring those with you to campus tomorrow if you did not turn in either your laptop or power supply. Also tomorrow is our field day and most of you who ordered and brought 
shirts to be tie-dyed by our PTO and you are allowed to wear those tomorrow. If you did not have a shirt tie-dyed, you may wear a shirt that is in your class advisory's color. Remember, you still are required to meet school district dress code in both shirt, length of shorts, etc. Also, you are allowed to wear um, tennis shoes of your choice tomorrow. They do not have to be with the STEM Academy dress code and part of our uniform. So you can bring out those wild and crazy sneakers. I do suggest closed-toed shoes due to the activities outside. Also, several of you asked about hats or caps. You may wear them outside at Field A. They are not allowed inside. Thank you. See you in the morning. Have a great afternoon. Excellent. Uh, and so I got a question. Wild sneakers, that's awesome. Yeah, well, th do they have to match that? Was it, that was it, so there's going to be some of that tomorrow. I have one question though. Who now has or has ever had a tie dye t shirt? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, absolutely. Some things come back in style. So um, the truck. <coughs> the truck that was going around. I wanted to investigate on it. So this is the next step. So since we're this was at an IBM office, this was filmed and shot at an IBM office. There's multiple camera views around the building. And so what this investigator is going to do is going, I'm going to do a multi-camera event search to see if I can spot that truck circling our building. That would be suspicious. First of all, we didn't order any gas or uh, propane or anything like that, so that truck shouldn't really be there. And uh, if it shouldn't even be there, it shouldn't be cutting through our parking lot, but it certainly shouldn't be driving around the facility. So that's what we're going to see. And it's going to happen pretty quickly. You know, we should have shown it off of mine. So I'm going to come in here and do a. Uh, uh, I found my first picture of it. This is an aerial bird's eye view. The green areas here is showing the um, uh, the camera views, the various camera views that I have. And so I know what I'm gonna search on now. I'm gonna search for events and I'm really looking for this white truck. So I'm gonna search across these three areas. I'm gonna, my primary color might be white. I think I'm just gonna look for some duration. I got, cause I know the first time I saw it. So I know how long a time frame I wanna look at around going around my building. I go ahead and set that. This is a very simple search just showing you the power of that. When I do the search, my result lists are gonna show up in this area right here. And so I can see this is one film strip, key strip of the drive loop. There's my truck with the bottles on it. The entrance loop, uh, you can see that it's right there. It's a different view of it. You can see him, yep, yeah, second to the last one. And then there's one more. We'll see it at the very bottom. Yep, there he is, going by the, where the entranceway is with a different camera view. So that's how you would piece it together forensically. Whether you're looking for a person, whether you're looking for a bag that was separated, you know, something for a particular color, you could look through a lot of video that way. So the last couple of things are some really cool things, and I love this track summary. So it's the same, it's the same search results, the same search, except I'm going to go up here and click track summary and this shows me all the lines during that the result list all the, tra the lines the trajectory that the object has gone whether it's a vehicle or whether it's a person I can highlight my pointer over a particular area on the uh, on the line and it shows me the picture where that car was before it turned into that slot if I double click on the line it turns yellow and it starts playing the video segment down here uh, one second so it shows me that video clip of that car pulling in so any one of those tracks that I highlight over I can click on it and get more information out of it visually that's pretty cool and then the next one so that's track summary that's the trajectory it took right wavy line things like that right I can hover over it see the object right at that spot of where it was double click on it and see the video segment now I'm going to show the heat map, and that's, that's the same kind of thing. It's the same search results, as all my search results, it just shows it in color based on speed. So where you see red, that's where it slowed down. So now I'm showing some, some of that, that same search results, I'm just showing it from a speed perspective, 
rather than just the trajectory that it took. And then finally, again, I'm playing the surveillance operator, uh, and I'm looking at, I'm, I'm a lot more effective now because I'm, I'm looking at just the things that the software is going, hey, you might want to pay attention to this, Burton. Look at this right here. And I'm a lot more fit, uh, effective doing that. And it's a lot more interesting work, by the way. And I can get more, more done. I can look at more cameras at the same time. So I find something that's an issue, and I want to notify somebody. Not everything is going to be a, uh, an issue. So this is where we've done the integration with the Intelligent Operations Center that have been demonstrating. So you can send in events manually, and that's what we're going to see. But we can also track those automatically. Any type of alert that happens in the video analytics portion, send it right to the geospatially, place it on the map, and uh, you know, send out notifications if need be. So this is what it looks like for an operator. He's looking at the real-time video feed. I start to see something that video analytics said, it looks like a crowd is forming. He goes and then turns around and says, oh, let me go ahead and see the real-time view of that. Right? I can either play back or see real-time views here. I can click on this button here and send off an alert uh, to the Intelligence Operations Center. And with that, I think we're back on time. Any questions? Is that, is that good? Great. All right. Well, thank you very much. If you'd like some uh, information sent to you, um, you can. I'll, I'll be in here. You can actually leave your business card, and I can, will email you information on uh, video analytics, uh, intelligent operations, and give you the link uh, 